Wednesday. Good to see everybody. Shoot! Um, haven't worked with him for two years and known him for about six now. Uh, the vision of how I want to play defense and how I want the defensive um, players to act and the coaches to serve the players. He had that vision. He shared that vision with me. Uh, very high capacity, very high character, which were those were the two most um, important part of pieces for me hiring coaches. And he has those. And uh, complete faith in Nick to run the defense. Go ahead and answer that. Yeah, well, I'm going to repeat exactly what you heard Jonathan say before. And that's being adaptable and more specifically be adaptable to the players that you have, right? And being able to utilize our guys' skill sets that puts them in the best position to win games. Ultimately, what do we have to do on a week-to-week -week basis to beat the opponent? And... Um, you know, that's one component of it. There's a whole other component of tar as far as serving the players, right? And that's everybody in the organization doing what their job is in order to truly maximize a player's ability and potential. You're building a very young staff. What is going into that in your mind? Like, why go that direction? And is that something you learned in Philly that is thought work there that you wanted to? Yeah, obviously in Philly we were a part of, a, I think, the youngest staff in the NFL. Uh, but that's not really uh, why I'm hiring the people that I'm hiring. It's more so what I'm looking for in the hiring process of who I want the assistants to be, whether it be running the offense or the defense, the position coaches, the quality controls, analysts, assistants, special teams, all that. You know, And, and I'm, you're going to hear me say it all the time is we're looking for the right people um, with the right capacity and the right character, and then people that want to be cardinals. And um, I'm very confident after you know working on this staff for however you know five days or whatever, you know all the work that you had done before that, getting ready for this position. But getting in the seat and then doing that, um, I'm ex I'm ex I'm very excited about the people we got coming in this building, and and more so more so than for me for our players. And uh, they they will get to know those guys, and they'll see that too. Jonathan, why, why you know obviously most coaches get their big break for a coordinator you know when they're in their later thirties or in their forties. Why why did you think he's he's ready? Was did part of you say, man, twenty nine? Did you think about that for a second? No, I I um, what's my quote that I use? Experience is not synonymous with knowledge. Correct. So. Um, like he knows me, huh? Uh, or he stole my quote. One uh, of the two. Might have stole his quote. No, uh, I, I really never, I really don't think uh, just that. Like, I don't really look at these guys when I'm listening to them talk and getting to know the people and not just Nick, these other guys, these other people that you're going to see that are going to start to come on board very soon. Uh, I'm really not worried about their age. You know, I'm worried about if they can serve their play, serve the players and get the job done as it relates to what we need to do as an organization and the Arizona Cardinals win. And um, that's that's what I'm doing. You brought, Nick, uh, you brought up the calling of the defense and letting Nick do that. So is that Nick's deal, or are you gonna are you gonna do something? Did of I that? say he was calling the defense? Well, I, I don't know. I thought maybe. Maybe I said that I'll get to that when we get to it. Nick will call the defense. <laughs> Nick, welcome uh, Bo Brock Station Sports. So, Did you have any other opportunities outside of this, and what made you choose coming to Arizona? Yeah, um, there were some other opportunities, nothing that was concrete, but people were, were giving me the opportunity to get in front of them and see what I could do as a you know defensive coordinator in, in their organization. And, and you know, I really appreciated those opportunities, and even being in consideration is is flattering. Um, there's a, there's a lot of reasons that I chose this organization. Um, one of them is the guy sitting right next to me right now. You know, obviously, I I have belief in him as a person, as a coach, as a guy that will help me out as a a coordinator because he was just in my shoes, and obviously, I got to witness work with him. But also, you know, and I also just kind of want to thank 
Michael Bidwell, Monty Austin Fort, you know, I, f I feel like this is a great thing here and, and we're going to build a orga uh, winning organization and I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to contribute how, you know, however I can as a coordinator to get us to achieving those goals that JG and, and Monty ultimately set for this organization. This might be a little too early because there's so many upcoming free agents on, on the defense. What do you think about this roster as it stands now and what it could yeah, you know, obviously we're still, it's, it's just been a couple of days and we're still sorting through everything. Um, there's definitely a lot of talent for, for the defense to be working with. And I'm excited to work with a lot of these guys from the front to the back end, um, you know, as, as we continue on. And, and the more I'm, you know, getting to know these guys uh, every day, try to reach out to a handful of guys and communicate with them. Some of our guys are, are here working out, which is, is good to start to connect with them. Um, but I'm excited to eventually get to the point where we are all in the building together and we're working on, okay, you know, you can start to see when you get out on the practice field in the media room, really what you got and the skill sets you're working with and, and figuring out what are the positions we're going to be able to put these guys in to go have success and win games. I mean, it's been great for both of you guys. Um, obviously, a great opportunity for, for both of you. Would, would Nick a guy, would, would you work with him and say, look, I don't care how old this guy is, I'm going to bring him with me whenever I move up because in his brain, he gets it, and, and you, was he a guy when I go, I want to work with this guy because we're in sync, and what was that conversation like when you got that coaching job in the car with you, look, this is our time. Yeah, now. so we had a, I mean, I interviewed a lot of people and had a, a, some really high quality, high, high quality candidates, and, um, you know, I, th I, th I figured that a lot of questions that I asked over a two, three, four hour interview, I kind of thought that he would say certain things, and he actually surprised me with some of his, some of the things that he said. And I was like, "Wow, we never really talked about that, but that's a really good idea." Um, so he obviously stood out to me um, through the interview process, and then working with him for two years, and like I said, just talking a lot of ball over before we actually hooked up in Philadelphia when he was, when I was in Indy, when he was in uh, Minnesota. Uh, you start to see that you know, people that you would feel real comfortable with hiring. And um, that's everybody on this staff. Like, you're, you guys are going to see, you're going to be like, well, where's the connection with JG with this one? Where's the connection with this one? You know, the connections start from a long way back. And then you go through the interview process, and I kept an open mind. And it was really, honestly, one of the best things I've had to do so far was interview and talk to a lot of people. Because I, even when he got hired, I said, "Boy, this guy was on this. Like, we need to, we need to research this and think about this. This was a co cool idea." But, um, you know, ultimately, I, in, I have a vision in my brain of what I want as far as coordinators go and position coaches go, and and he fit that mold. Do you always this high energy? In the Press conference start like I run circles around this guy, so I don't know. I'm not going to refute that. This guy is is high energy all the time. I'm a little bit. I have a little bit more mellowness to me. I will say this: when we got to Philly, uh, that offensive staff, the, like our head coach was like, "You guys better pick it up because we got way more juice than you." And um, so you could imagine. And we had some guys on defense that were phenomenal coaches. Uh, did obviously, you know, the product on the field would validate that. But uh, we had some high energy guys on defense. I was like, geez, guys, I went to the staff, man. I said, head coach says we got to pick it up. And uh, so we did. But um, we, I've always been on staffs, not always. Um, the last staff that we were on kind of set the bar for enthusiasm and energy. And it's, it's not hard to be like that if you love what you're doing. Like I, I tell people, like I've never been, I've never went to work a day in my life since I started coaching in football. Like it's fun, you know what I mean? So I obviously have a lot of passion and juice for what I'm doing, you know? Probably even more if I walk to a tee box on one and this is probably, I would have energy for if I put it down there a little left or right, but if I hit it OB then, uh, you know, so. You know, I'll, I'll say one thing to that though too is you know, being energetic is not the same thing as as being emotional. And um, I always pride myself on bringing energy and enthusiasm and just love for the job and the sport every day. But, you know, one thing that I always strive to be and that I expect from from my staff defensively is to be highly emotionally intelligent and to be the same person every single day. And I, I kind of refer to it often as emotional intelligence of ultimately being in a state of mind where 
you are optimal to solve problems. And that is not the same thing as being um, energetic. I think you have to have both. But being energy doesn't necessarily mean that you're just wildly out of control. No, there's a, there's a high level of control mentally and understanding that when you're delivering something, a message, or you're out on the field and you're doing it energetically, it's very much intentional and controlled, right? And so, yes, I would say we're, we're often energetic, and, and you feel that right now um, just up in the offices, but I, th that also means that, you know, I, I, I demand of myself first and of my staff that there is a high level of emotional intelligence with that. How does it feel to be at this point in your career at this age? It, 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 is, uh, it is flattering. It is very cool. And I would say this, like, I would not be here if I did not come across certain people throughout my entire life, right? And so it goes back to my childhood of, you know, obviously I had um, great parents growing up, and, and they put me in, in positions where, you know, whether it was school, sports, anything like that, you know, I was, I was given the opportunities to really figure out what I love to do in, in life. And ultimately, you know, I was led to football. I have two older brothers and, you know, they, they used to make me, you know, just watch NFL films. I think I, I used to watch a, a video called Pure Payton on Walter Payton at least once a week, probably for a span of like five years. Um, and I can still, I still tell you how the whole, the whole video goes. And so like, you know, that early on part of my life led me to, you know, loving the game of football. And I'd say about in, in, in high school, like everything I did centered around football at that point, it was pretty clear. And, you know, I had my brothers there, my brother, one of my brothers coached me in high school. And then my other brother, I was able to play with him in college. And when I got to college, he really showed me the ropes on how to study opponents. Um, and I, I can say I still use a lot of the stuff that we did um, in my preparation process. And then, you know, throughout coaching, like you, whether when I was playing, a lot of the coaches that I played for, or early in my career, when I got to be around um, Mike Zimmer, or Jeff Howard, who's, with, who's now with the, the Chargers, who really helped me get into the NFL. Um, or Jonathan Gannon, Nick Sirianni, even offensive coaches that I'm in the same building with, they teach you so much. And so honestly, I think it's a, it's a product of being around the right people and, and trying to soak up as much as possible from those guys and just be ready when this opportunity comes. And I'm, I'm extremely grateful that it, it did come, you know, at, it, at the timing it is, is, is cool. If it would have been later, that's also really cool, you know. Um, but I would say it's ultimately, I'm lucky to be around the people that I've been around throughout my whole life and, you know, in my coaching career. Uh, let me, let me just follow that up real quick. I thought I was long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Go ahead. Which, uh, which players from this defense through your early evaluation stand out? Yeah, we're going to continue to go through that, especially when we get a full staff in here and we can look at guys together. Um, you know, there's a lot of players that uh, play extremely hard, fly around. You know, one that comes to mind, obviously, Buddha. Buddha sets the standard on how you play this game. It is violent. It is high motor 24-7. And I'm just picking one guy out. There's all, guy, there's all kinds of guys on this defense that play to that standard. And we're going to continue to demand to push that even further and for everyone to be at that standard of playing violently and being explosive. And um, you know, I'm going to continue to, to evaluate and watch the tape. And we're going to figure out, you know, not just from a um, motor and violence standpoint, but everybody has to get better, including us coaches, right? And so. It's going to be the coach's job. It's going to be my job to develop improvement plans for each guy to say, hey, this is going to take your game to the next level. How do we get them to maximize and hit their ceiling? And that's a process that we're still going through um, right now at the moment. Jonathan, with how quickly it seems like you're getting your staff together, is this a function of the timing and with the combine and everything and being later? Or do you think even if you had been hired three weeks ago, four weeks ago, you still would have gotten it together this fast? Um, you know, be where your feet are. I don't know about that. I think that I'm very uh, pleased with Michael and Monty have helped me out a tremendous amount 
being able to do this and get guys in place pretty quickly. But, um, you know, like I said, it might seem quick to you guys, but it's like, you know, there's three days there. I was on a Zoom from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. I was like, holy cow, are we ever going to get anybody hired? But, um, no, it's been, a, it's been a good process. And ultimately, honestly, the people that I'm close with that are head coaches that I can pick up the phone and call right now, the one all kind of advice was all over there. The one thing that was consistent, they said, do not rush the staff because you got, you know, a, a good chance to hire the right people and get the people that you want in there. Don't rush it, you know. And I haven't felt like I don't know, you know, whatever time frame you're thinking. I haven't felt like we were rushed at all, and I think that we've been thinking clearly through some things. And Monty's been a fantastic, fantastic sounding board for me. He's been in on most of the interviews. And, um, you know, I get his perspective as well. And then we, we talked to Michael. Michael's been in on some. And um, it's just, it's just, it's honestly been a really cool process. And just excited to get everybody here. And we're pretty close. But, um, and then ultimately get to work. How much of the previous staff are you going to retain? Yeah, so I talked to all those guys. That's, we're still in discussions with some of that. But there are going to be a couple guys that um, we're going we're gonna to keep um, because they fit the mold of what I was looking for. And um, it was a pleasure to talk to all those guys. And a lot of those guys had, you know, a lot of opportunities. Like, you know, that's kind of normal. Um, you know, VJ was one. I had a great conversation with him. And I know he moved on and he's going to go be a DC somewhere. But, um, the, you know, Sean Jefferson, I think he's going to Carolina with Frank and helped me a lot, you know, gave me a lot of information. And, um, you know, those were two guys that stand out I thought were really good. But um, I'm really excited. There are some guys that uh, we're going to keep that when you see the final – uh, list put out that uh, you'll know why I kept them. How would you sort of process how fast you've risen? I mean, do you need to take a step back and, you know, age, age aside, do you need to think about how quickly this, this career has gone through? Um, not much, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm very focused on what do I have to do today to um, get better and put our, put our defense in a position to be successful. So I can't say I've really had time to reflect on that per se um, but you know like I said I am very grateful that you know this opportunity came when it did um, without a question but I'm trying to be where my feet my feet are every day you know this is a good little follow-up to that you know and um, I asked all the guys one of the questions I talked about in the interview process and it wasn't a um, it's not a to bash anybody I always say hey like who are you working for you know and you get some people who they're working for and I ask what's the best thing that he did and the worst thing that he did and and the variance to that answer is all over and um, you know I, I actually asked that question to learn and when I asked him what's the best thing I did and what's the worst thing I did that the thing that he you know said to me about the worst thing that he did that he will change when I got here it's eye-opening I mean you hear some interesting things that you're like wow like yeah I did do that and and he didn't like it you know and I said well then do it better but um so it that was kind of a cool thing um going through the interview process listening to people there's a lot of good coaches out there you know there really is and that's, you know, you hear me talk about growth mindset. That's an easy way in five minutes to say, oh, man, I didn't write it down, and this is how I can work on my game. Or we do, I think, do a good job of this. Let's, let's expand on that. So um, just excited for those guys. You talk, about your, you talk about your brother. Are you going to bring Madcap Moss in for any? It seems like he's kind of bringing himself in. <laughs> you know, everywhere I've been, this guy's asking for a tryout. I'm like, dude, you're washed. You can't. You can't. He can't play this game anymore. Um, but nah, he's a he. I mean, that that would be my brother that I played with, who's who's been there for me and supported me um, along along my entire life. And you know, it's cool to see him doing you know really big things in the WWE. Obviously, I'm you know proud of him to be able to call him my brother and flip on the TV every Friday night, watch a little SmackDown. You know, he had a title title match. Last week that he lost, very disappointed in him. To be 100 percent honest, um, thought he should have should have pulled that one out. But um, I don't even know what the question was. To be 100 percent honest, your brother, you should be watching tape on Friday night instead of, instead of WWE. I mean, unbelievable. No, I would whoop him. Have I ever tried? 
No, I, you know, I, uh, I, I didn't really think much about that when I was done playing. I was, I was ready to go into coaching. Hey, John, we'll make this the last one. Okay. In a profession uh, where the average age is, excuse me, a little bit older, what's the advantage to being a younger coach coming in? I don't think there's an advantage or disadvantage to any age, to be 100% honest. I think there's a lot of things that go into making a coach a good coach, right? And whether I'm 29 or I'm, you know, 55 years old and I'm still trying to be a great coach, there's certain things that you have to do, whether it's, you know, acquiring more knowledge and adapting to the game or being able to connect with players so that you can coach them better. Um, and everything that involves maximizing the player and putting us in position to win, like, I'm always striving to get better at, the, at those things, no matter what age I am. And um, so I can't say that there's an advantage being younger, or I don't know if there's an advantage being older. I'm not older yet, so I, I wouldn't know. But um, I think it's just trying to be the best of yourself in that moment every single day. Thank you, guys. Hey, I'm looking forward to really you know, being able to connect with you guys throughout. Don't do that.